They know that this is a killer. This is still the number one killer of our young women. So when you think of that just as a statistic, that's pretty significant. My name is Liz McKenna and my position with the Chemo Crisis Services Richmond Health Richmond Eating Disorder Program is as a counselling psychologist, the coordinator of the program and an art therapist, expressive therapist. Media has become such a, a driving force. I think all of us like to think, well, you know, the media, we're not affected. We're not going to be influenced by but we're all influenced by it. Yeah. Um, media doesn't really affect me much. Just what affects me most would be probably seeing other girls skinnier than me. It's just not real things I see rather than media. Men probably like 12 or something. Um, five. five. <laughs> the community tends to think of an eating disorder as white middle class disorder, but in actual fact it crosses economic, um, financial, cultural barriers. It has no age limit. It's multifaceted. It's multi-layered. It's very complex. It's an egocentronic disease, which means that it really does affect your cognitive ability. The physical uh, effects would be that, you know, you lose your bone mass. You can uh, stunt your growth. It can affect your heart, your lungs, all of your major organs, particularly your brain. Um, osteoporosis, inability to bear children. I think young girls are looking at magazines and seeing women that are a size zero, and the reality is that most of those women are not eating. They're eating, or they're eating salads, or eating. They're not eating regular intake, and they have personal trainers that work with them three hours a day. So most women can't obtain that, nor should they want to. Well, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, one of them is that a lot of people, especially younger um, children, and probably starting at an early age, um, they look at the body image and they want to either, um, you know, not eat at all, mm -hmm. or they're eating too much and then they binge it out so that they want to keep slim. And I think this goes right through from six years to even you know later on in life mm -hmm. as well. My own research tells me that five and six year olds don't like their bodies anymore. Physically, it can affect you. Psychologically, it can affect you. Socially, um, you start isolating from your family. You start uh, feeling stressed, having unable to sleep, unable to cope with your life, feeling like your life is out of control, or feeling like somehow you're isolated. And so sometimes you really don't think you have a problem. You think it's somebody else, you think it's your family. And you sometimes you don't even see what other people see. So it has the ability to distort your body image to yourself. So you may feel differently, you may see things differently, you may perceive yourself differently, and you may want to be an ideal weight, which is really at odds with your actual body type, because there's really only three body types. But they've inherited um, a larger frame, and they want to be really, really slim. Well, all the dieting and all the struggling without putting yourself into a really dangerous situation with your health, you were never meant to be that shape, that size. So someone who's tall and has a large frame, it's very difficult for them to become and want the childlike figure. And if that's what they want, that's why an eating disorder actually gets going in the first place. <laughs>
parents and the community needs to understand that, say, when I was young, the impact of like a 3% difference between me and my pop idols, it was only 3%, whereas 10 years after that, in the 80s, it was 10%. Then in the 90s, it was 23%. Our young people today are struggling because they are being asked to be 28% thinner than the norm. So the average person is five foot four, and they should be 140 pounds. But somehow we equate thinness with health. So we have a sick society. And it's kind of funny because I just bought an Andy Warhol print in New York City and I brought mm -hmm. it back. And you think of, you know, Marilyn Monroe. She mm -hmm. was like of her time. She was yeah. beautiful and people loved her and she yeah. had a figure. And I just think it's so sad that we're celebrating skeletons, really. Yeah and not celebrating women for who they are, and for young girls, it's, it's tough. It's about your beliefs and values. When it interferes with your life, when it's isolating you, when you can't sleep, when it's emotionally draining, when it's all you can think about are food and what you're going to eat, you know that the balance in your life has gone out of whack. Well, the healthy ways to lose weight, as a, as a for most of us, what, what I recommend for people with an eating disorder is what I would recommend for most people. You don't get overtired. You don't get over hungry. You don't get too stressed. You sleep well. You balance your life. You have a life that you feel good about, that you feel hopeful about the future. So we want people to accept themselves for who they are, to feel good about themselves, to know that externally your beauty isn't and your self-worth isn't wrapped in in the external stuff. The important part is what's inside. It's about your spirit. It's about who you are on the inside, what kind of an individual you are. Caring, empathic, sensitive, kind, generous.